Ron Allen, you were also covering, you've been covering this trial from the start. At, at one point, there was a, a note about a couple of the jurors, it, it appears, falling asleep during Roberta Kaplan's closing remarks. This was um, the lawyer for E. Jean Carroll, two men. One, according to the notes, appeared to, to have his head on his, on his chest. Then again, you know, the jury brought back a, a majority um, uh, yes verdict. And no on the rape, but yes on the sexual assault, yes on the defamation, and, and quite a large number in damages. What do you, what do you make of that as, as you've been covering this for so long? Well, yes, perhaps the juror had made up his or her mind early on and was not engaged in the rest of it, or who knows. Um, but I think um, E. Jean Carroll's attorneys really made a point about the Access Hollywood tape being Donald Trump's confession, and they used that word. And we all know what he says in that. And that, they played it five times. And they were trying to resist, uh, the defense was trying to resist the, the tape being played so many times in court. Uh, but that may have been one of the nails in the coffin because he basically says that as a star, and he's a star, you can go out and grope women, and, and it's, this is the way it's always been. So, so there's that. Uh, the other thing I think is striking about this, remember, this case is only possible because of a new New York State law, a Survivors Act, that just passed the legislature and opened up a year window for victim survivors of sexual assault to file cases. And as I understand it, there have been hundreds filed. And E. Jean Carroll fought for that law, advocated for that law, and is one of the first cases to actually get to court. Um, so without that law, this case is covered by the statute of limitations, and she cannot file a claim. Also, in, in a federal proceeding, as is the case in some state courts, but here it was, it's crucial that there were two other women who were allowed to testify. In, in state courts, they call them prior bad actors, prior bad act, acts. Um, and we saw this in the Cosby case. We saw this in the Harvey Weinstein case, where, again, Donald Trump was not charged in connection with those cases, yet these women were allowed to come in, tell their story, to, to establish that there was a pattern there. And, and that apparently plays a big role in, in, this, in this verdict. And again, the other key witnesses, her two friends. They weren't just friends. They were respected, they are respected, prominent journalists, authors, writers in, in New York City. Carol Martin, one of the first female African-American anchors on TV here in the 70s and, and 80s and so forth. And Lisa Birnbaum, also a, just a very well-known, a, a legitimate writer, so, someone who has some heft. So in other words, it wasn't just friends of hers saying, oh yeah, she told me this. These were people who had some credibility, who had a lot of credibility, who the jury in, in case of Carol Martin probably knew because they'd seen her on TV uh, as they were growing up, and they were of a certain age. I saw her growing up on TV. Hmm. In any event, so there were those things. There was that. There were those aspects to this case that that make it somewhat unique, and and uh, and allowed the plaintiff, E. Jean Carroll, to bring in witnesses and bring in uh, bring in witnesses and testimony that that really helped push the ball down the, the over the over the goal line if you will or, or really helped her make her case to the jury because again it wasn't just he said she said it was she said and these other 11 there were 11 witnesses but particularly those four others also said and they and they so they backed up her story and and she was on the witness stand uh, just a very compelling witness she stuck to her story remember there was that moment where um uh, Joe Tacopino challenged, why didn't you scream? And she pushed back hard and said, sometimes women scream, sometimes they don't. It doesn't matter. He still raped me. And that sort of encapsulated perhaps the, the, the back and forth of that whole cross-examination. She didn't back down. She cried. She was emotional. But she remembered details as well, that this was on the sixth floor in the laundry department. She remembered kind of the time of day that it was dark when she came out, even though she couldn't remember what month it was, what year it was, what day it was. In the end, the jury, again, based on the preponderance of the evidence, not beyond a reasonable doubt, found her more credible. And on the other hand, you had former President Trump coming to testify may or may not have made a, a difference. But he did testify in that deposition, in the Access Hollywood tape. They heard his side of the story. They saw him. They were able to assess his demeanor in that deposition. 
they know him, yeah. although they were told to, of course, put their political allegiances aside. But he was there. They had a measure. They took a measure of him and they found him essentially liable for just about everything here.